Hi everyone. I wanted to talk about a little bit about my testimony and something that maybe um, some of you might be dealing with. Maybe you don't realize what it is and I just kind of wanted to just share my testimony and maybe it'll help someone and um, bring healing, bring direction. So um, I really quickly, like I I mean, we all have a history, right? I just want to go really quickly into the point what I'm going to lead into. You know, I was um, sexually molested as a child from the time I was six until I think I was about 12. And, um, you know, an innocent child and, you know, what do we know at that age and just scared to death, literally scared that something literally felt like he was going to kill me and I would keep my eyes closed and that caused a lot of fear in my life. That's something else, but uh, from what I wanna talk about. But that opened up a seed of rejection in my life, a seed of betrayal in my life. Because here is this person who is supposed to be my, it was my stepfather and it's supposed to be my father figure. And you know, here he is, um, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm feeling betrayed. And um, I'm confused. I'm so confused as to what love is. And so fast forward now, you know, I ended up, you know, after I graduated high school, I ended up, you know, meeting, meeting someone and got pregnant when I was 17 and had a baby at 18. I had just turned 18 and had to take care of my oldest daughter and, um, was pretty much thrown into the world to start, you know, being a parent at 18 years old. And um, that was very traumatic for me. And that was with one, just one child. Fast forward later on, I'm gonna be a single mom to three children and a total of 15 years of being a single mom. And throughout my life, um, it would lead me to relationships that I thought you know, were relationships, obviously. And, um, and it was because I just wanted to feel loved. I was just looking to feel loved. I had so much love to give and I just wanted to be loved in return. I wanted, cause I knew what I had in my family, you know, what had happened to me. I knew that wasn't real love, but I knew that love existed and that love was wonderful because I went to church, I read the Bible, and I just knew that love is, you know, love is God, God is love. And, um, but I wasn't feeling that right. Even though I was very connected and I had a relationship with God, um, I was saved when I was seven years old. It's still, you know, I didn't know. I just didn't know what I know now, obviously, like most of us. So, the patterns that it would that would happen were that I would obviously, you know, be with somebody who I thought was going to love me the way that I wanted to be loved. And then it didn't happen that way. And of course, the other person had either I alter, um, ulterior motives or they were just they didn't know how to love either. You know, they love to their fullest capacity of what they know. And so that would lead to rejection, obviously. And most of the time it was to betrayal as well. So, um, you know, that just like every relationship would just put another layer of rejection, another layer of betrayal, another layer of hurt, and another layer of just being lost and confused. I was just so confused. I didn't understand why, if I love that person so much, and I was so good to them. Why did they still, you know, treat me the way they did? Why did they still discard me? Why did they, why did they still throw me, you know, to the wayside pretty much? And, um, you know, I had a couple, I had two failed marriages and um, due to obviously me not being healed from trauma. One of them was a Christian, but he also, you know, and throughout my life after that, it was just either a relationship that I was in or I would just find myself in just situations, ships or just situations. And every single time I had a good 
motive. I had good intentions, you know, to really make this work, to really be, you know, I was literally looking, I'm not going to lie, like for a husband, I wanted to be with somebody and not be divorced. And I wanted to live holy and I didn't want to live in sin. I didn't want to like, you know, live with nobody outside of marriage. And, you know, I knew the Bible and I knew what I was supposed to do, but I just couldn't stop. Like I couldn't, I just couldn't stop. And I didn't, I literally just didn't know the knowledge that we have now, the revelation of the word, the revelation of, of just the spirit being poured out into this world right now. Um, I mean, for me, um, you know, there's no excuse. I wish I would have known this 30 years ago, you know, but, or even longer, but all glory be to God. I know now, but, um, you know, and it, you get attracted to the same type of people that have the same trauma, the same hurts, the same demons, the same addictions, the same sexual immorality. And I was literally, I could see like, now that I know, it was like our demons were attracted to each other and would bring us close to each other. The enemy would just put somebody in line and he would know what I want. He would know, you know, what, what I was looking for. And then every single time I might get a little wiser and he would just get, bring somebody else that was a little bit more, you know, a little bit more charming, a little bit more, had a better job, had, you know, all these things. And in between all, in between the breakups, in between the failed, whatever they were, I'm just going to be honest, I would, in between, that's when I would go to the clubs or I would drink. I mean, I would, I could drink. I used to be able to, I was a drinker, man. I started drinking because of my hurt and my failed divorce probably since I was about 27 and that was always my go-to even though I was a Christian and I would go to church and I would even go on mission trips because my heart is after God you know but I just didn't know I couldn't help it I literally would try to stop so many times and just didn't know how to I was like now I'm getting high like every day I'm over here drinking more and more now i'm hanging out with people that are like in the underground like the underground world i'm hanging out with strippers i'm hanging out with you know entertainment managers <laughs> you know um it was it was a lot i did a lot more it was a lot of you know the perversion and the lust and the the things that you the things that i did we're just getting worse and worse and worse and deeper and deeper and deeper. And fast forward, I just came to a point in my life because my whole life, all I ever wanted to do was to just serve God. I just wanted to do my calling and whatever it was that he had for me, that's all I wanted to do. And sorry, there's like a wasp on the ground, sorry. <laughs> and um, so I, you know, um, I just was beyond myself. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't understand why I was in the predicaments that I was in. I just couldn't understand. And I literally just one day got in my room and just started crying out to God. And when I tell you, like, it was like a deep cry, like a deep, ooh, it was like a deep hunger, a deep seeking. I was just I didn't want to live like this anymore. And I was tired of feeling unfulfilled, unsatisfied. And I just started to pray. And I just literally told God, what am I doing? What is in the way of me serving you? Like, I still had to ask him, <laughs> knowing what it was. But, and I asked him, what is it? What is it? Because I don't want to do this anymore. I just want to live righteous, live a holy life, live it the right way. And I just want to serve you. And, um, and he spoke loudly in my ear. It was my sexual immorality, my fornication. And it was that perversion. And at that moment I screamed and all I could think about was the verse that says that Paul said that if, if your eye causes you to sin, then pluck it out if your hand causes you to sin then cut it off and at that moment I 
knew what I had to say. And I said, God, please remove this from me right now. Take this, this desire, take it out of me, this physical desire, take the sexual desire, take whatever it is that's inside of me. And, and just like, I literally said, put it on a shelf, put it on a shelf. If you have a husband for me, you know, if you don't, it's okay, but just take it away from me. I don't want it anymore because if it's going to keep me from the presence of God, I don't want it. And whew, I'm trying not to get emotional, but that was, that was the start of the beginning for me. That was the ending to a new beginning. And right then and there, he delivered me. Like when I tell you instantly, he delivered me. And I'm just talking about just that part. He delivered me because that was my biggest, biggest blockage. That's what the enemy was using to keep me from knowing the truth and from moving forward. And so he took that out of me. And from that moment on, I've been single now for six years. And, but that wasn't like the end of it. Now that my eyes were open and now that my spirit can hear, you know, like the Holy Spirit was actually, would speak to me, but my ears would be blocked by the enemy or my heart just wasn't in the right posture, wasn't in the right place. And I couldn't hear God and I couldn't hear direction. That's what it was. I couldn't hear his direction. And I just was so hungry, so hungry for change, so hungry for transformation. And I just wanted whatever it was going to take moving forward. I just wanted whatever that was to get me to the point where God has me. Mind you now, I'm in my 50s, okay? This was about, the beginning of my healing was probably about three years ago, four years ago. And I'm saying this because it literally was for lack of knowledge. You know, they say, it says in the Bible that many will perish for lack of knowledge. And I thank God. I may have been saved. I may have still gone to heaven. You know what I mean? Because I was saved. I, but I wasn't living my life abundantly. I wasn't living it to the full potential. And I knew God had more for me. And so that started the journey of my inner healing. More deliverances, obviously. It was I mean, I had to be... My, my main stronghold was the orphan spirit. And, um, which is very common, especially in people who have had, you know, um, molestation or any type of sexual abuse or any type of any kind of abuse, really. And, um, I just started that journey. And let me tell you, those that know me know <laughs> the transformation that has happened in my life. I so many people can testify as to the type of person that I was and how I was such a selfish person. I was such a lot. I was so lost. I was just so lost. And I was just the drinking. And I mean, oh man, it was so bad. The perversion, just everything. It was so bad. It was so bad. And I'm a new creation. Thank you, Jesus. He created a new creation in me. And, um, I just through sanctification, through living a holy, a, I say holy, but living a pure life, you know, I got rid of anything that looks like the world, anything that smells like the world, anything that reminds me of the world, that reminds me of my past. I got rid of it. Legit. I don't, I've done, I don't know how many, how many purges. I just throw it away. It, you can, I mean, down to clothes, jewelry, photos, cards, phone numbers, music. I mean, that's just part of it. I can't tell you how many times I've been delivered from different things. And again, it was a renewing of the mind. It was renewing of my mind through the word. It was getting inner healing. It was getting like counseling. It was, you know, um, and then just sharing my testimony, you know, to people and just started to just, you know, serve God. And, you know, he reveals stuff all the time, all the time stuff, you know, may come up to the surface and I'll have to deal with it. And, um, I just praise God. And I know that all that time, all those times that I would be with someone else, it was just literally trying to keep me away from like 
my kingdom spouse, you know, and he has one for me. I believe he does. He has one for me, but I'm not looking for it. You know, it's when God's timing is right, but I have way too much healing to do to even have been thinking about that before. Like I said, it's been six years now, but you know, he has someone out there for you. For those of you that are single in your single season right now, enjoy your single season because that's a moment for you. Those are moments. Those, that is time to get close to God. That is time for you to just really um, hone in and just get healing and, and, and guidance. And it's just for you to get close to God. That's all it is because ultimately we have to know that we are loved by God first. Like, nobody's ever going to love me. Not even my kingdom spouse is ever going to love me the way that God loves me. Nobody. And so I've, I've completely embraced that. I used to hear that when I was younger. And I just would be like, yeah, you guys, there's just a bunch of hype. You guys are just, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. And I wouldn't believe it. But I'm telling you. And for those of you that are single moms, I know it's hard. I've been there and I'm telling you out of everything I've ever been through in my life and I've been through a lot I want to say being a single mom to three children was probably one of the hardest most traumatic most post you know when they talk about that post traumatic syndrome whatever was from being a single mom and making so many mistakes as a mom you know, because of my lostness, because of the lack of knowledge. And if I could just encourage you single parents out there, just, I am telling you from a girl, I was raised in the hood. I was, um, I was raised in the hood. I was in, you know, people that know, know. <laughs> and I am telling you, like I'm telling you, just cling to God, take your kids to church. Don't even think about a man until you get healed and delivered and you get that inner healing, that counseling, that therapy, what anything, everything that you need. You know, that's what I would do. What I would do now is so different and I wish I could go back and take it, but I can't. There's no condemnation in Christ. God has mercy and grace. My children all grew up to be amazing adults and they all are saved, baptized, and doing better than me. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Um, and I praise God every day. It is crazy because in the midst of all of that stuff that I was doing as a single mom, I can't tell you how many nights I would I would pray for them. I wouldn't even really, I would pray for me for my situations, but I really wouldn't pray for me, me. I would pray for my kids. So many nights after they would go to bed, I would be on the floor crying, crying crying on my knees, reading everything that I could about. I mean, I was trying, I would read books about, you know, praying parents and, you know, how to raise godly kids. And I was reading all kinds of books, trust me. I knew I needed something, but, you know, and they're really at the time, I couldn't really talk to anybody. I didn't feel there was nobody that really related to my situation. So I'm here to tell you single moms, that it's okay that you're gonna make it and I can't I so many miracles so many times that God came through for me and provided like even in my sin even with the things that I was doing I can't tell you how many times he provided for me and if you're that person and you need to talk to somebody or you need help or you need prayer or you need deliverance hey hit me up <laughs> message me let me know. I can talk to you, cancel, whatever it might be. Um, you have somebody here who has been through it and knows exactly what you're going through. But I'm also here to encourage you that you got this. God has you. And if you really, truly surrender everything to him, oh, he's going to make a way for you. He's going to make a way. There's hope. He is your refuge. He is your fortress. He will hide you under his feathers. He has you. He knows you. He's near you. He's right next to you right now. And he will never leave you. No matter how much bad you have done, no matter the the worst thing that you could think of that you have ever did, it's nothing to him. It's nothing to him. 
I promise you. I promise you. God is so amazing. He's so full of love. And I just thank God every day for what he did in my life. And I want to share it. I want to help. I want to do whatever I can to bring people to that freedom. You know, it's so amazing. So I hope this helps somebody. I, even if it's one person, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would just, you know, minister to that one soul, to that one person, to that one mother, to that one woman. And this, this goes for men too. I, I, I didn't mean to exclude you men. This goes for you guys too. It, it is the exact same pain, the exact same sin, the exact same deliverance healing happens is with men too. And your kingdom wife is also coming. Your kingdom husbands are coming. So just hold on, reach out to me. And I wanna say a quick prayer really quick for our, our men and women, brothers and sisters in Christ that are maybe going through this right now. And Father God, right now, I pray, Lord, that you would be with these mighty women of God, these mighty men of God that are raising children by themselves, that are going through this problem of, of lust and sexual immorality and, and the rejection and whatever, every feeling that, that, that they are feeling, Lord. I just pray, Father God, that you would reach them where they are right now, that you would let them know that you are right next to them. Father God, that they would have a mighty encounter with you, Lord Jesus. I pray for divine connections for you. I pray that God will put people in your life that will lead you and guide you to the healing and to the help that you need and to salvation. And right now, if you want to give your life to Christ and you've never done that before and you want to say, I want to submit, just repeat after me, say, Jesus, I believe in you, Lord. I believe in everything that you did and that you died on the cross for me. I believe in you, Father God. And I just pray right now that you would just forgive me for everything I've done. And Lord, that you would just please just help me, Lord, to be a better person. And I just want to submit my life to you. And I submit my life to you right now. And I just thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. That's simple. The gospel is simple. It's so simple. He died for you to take away your sins. He died for you to help you. He bore every single sin that we did on that cross. He's been through every situation we have been through. He has felt every pain, emotion, everything that we have felt. And he did that so that he could be that person for you right now. So I just send blessings your way. I just send Holy Spirit, please fill them, fill their homes. Help them in their situations right now, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I love you guys, and thank you for listening.